Dear students, I'm really happy to be online and today we are not going to discuss anything that is in your textbooks. Today's class is a common class. It's for classes 8, 9 and 10 and it's, uh, it's a free class. Anybody can participate, anybody can listen. So I welcome all of you to enjoy this session with me because today we are going to discuss something very important for every student's academic progress. And what is important for every student's academic progress? Well, if you want me to answer that question, it is nothing but memory. Memory is something which is inevitable or which is important in the academic progress of every student. Why is it important? It is important because we have to learn many facts. We have to store information in the brain, whether it is physics or chemistry or biology or language or mathematics or social studies, whatever the subject may be, we get information in the class. The teacher delivers and he discusses the subject matter. And he gives us several points to remember, reflect, and put it at the back of our mind, to register in our mind. So, gathering information is the primary part in a student's academic career. Information, facts, principles, theories, equations, and many more things. So, you need to have a brain which can not only take all this information or these pieces of information, but to store them. You need to be capable of storing them and not storing alone will do the job. You have to store and you have to recall whenever it is required. So recalling what you have studied is memory. So we are going to discuss memory today and let me start with a very, very interesting fact. You know, we are all living in the age of advanced technology. There are so many electronic gadgets which have made learning easy. That's the role the technology is playing today. For example, you have mobile phones, you have the Google, the internet, you have Facebook, you have WhatsApp, you have Twitter, you have Instagram. The list is endless. So there is every possible teaching aid that is available electronically today. You go to Google, you get any piece of information that you want. So, some people say, why do we need memory? When we are living in an age of technology, when Google is there to solve all our problems, what is the need of storing the information in the brain? What is the need of memory? Well, this is a valid question, but the answer has to be reflected upon. You see, all our decisions need facts. All the decisions that we take are based on some facts. I will give you a very simple example. A boy in a class, in a senior class, let's say a boy of class 10 has broken the window of the classroom. Now, the information reaches the class teacher. The class teacher makes an inquiry and then the matter is forwarded to the principal. So the principal calls the student to his office, makes an inquiry and he collects the facts. He just does not pronounce the judgment or give a punishment. All of a sudden, he first goes through the facts. He collects the facts. What has happened? Was he really involved in breaking the window? Or was there anyone who instigated him? So as a principal, she will do an analysis. And the analysis is based on facts. And she will try to get a proof for the incident. Proof in the sense, facts. So based on the facts, when she arrives at a conclusion that the boy has really committed the kind of mistake, that is, he has really broken the window, then she makes a decision. And what is the decision? It may vary from principal to principal. Some principals may say, okay, I fine you. Uh, the, a sum of rupees 1,000 is being imposed on you. When you come to class tomorrow, bring the fine and pay to the office. 
Well, this must be might be a decision of one principle. Another principle might call the parents of the boy. You bring your parents tomorrow. We'll have a discussion. We'll have to kind of put an end to this problem. But first, I would like to discuss the matter with your parents. This might be the decision of another principle. Another principle might take another kind of what you call road. Okay. Tomorrow when you come to class, you will have to complete the assignments of the first two lessons of your physics or your chemistry or your English lesson. So you will have to write down all the questions and answers. You have to finish that, then show it to me. After that, I will tell you what to do. Till then, you cannot enter the class. So you see, the incident is only one, but the decisions vary. So what I'm trying to tell you is every decision needs facts. Every decision is based on facts and without facts you cannot take a right decision. If you are taking a wrong decision that means you have not analyzed the facts in a proper way. So decisions they need facts and if you have the facts in your brain well you have the information on your fingers ends or you have the information on the fingers fingertips which means if the brain has stored the information in the right way the information definitely is on your fingers ends this is what most of the psychologists say so facts are stored in the brain and the more the information is stored in the brain the better it is for you to have it on your fingers ends. If it is here, definitely it comes out. So, if you are depending on Google for every decision, then you may not be able to take the right decision. Google gives you the information, but who takes the decision? Only human beings can take a decision. Google cannot decide for you. Technology can de cannot decide anything for you. You have to make decisions for your own progress, for your own development, for your own awareness, whatever it may be. So, Google is a means to improve your personality or improve your memory. But Google is not the end. Making the decision has to be done by you and it is an individual affair. Therefore, if somebody says memory is not needed in the age of Google and Internet, I wouldn't quite agree with them because decisions are based on the facts and decisions have to be taken by human beings. Oh. Now, I'll give you one example. A doctor enters an operation theatre and he starts performing a surgery on a patient. Now, supposing if he were to have an iPad with him, or if he were to have a mobile phone with him, and if he follows the iPad and the mobile phone for every instruction that is related to the surgery, do you think he'll be able to kind of successfully complete the operation? Do you think he'll be successful in performing the surgery? If he's going after the instructions of the iPad and the mobile phone, definitely. He would be wasting a lot of time and not only that, he would be considered an unprofessional. He would not be considered as an able doctor because he depends on Google for every instruction that is related to the surgery of the patient. If he goes by that, the life of the patient might be at risk. So definitely... Google is not the deciding factor. Google cannot make decisions for you. You have to make decisions. Right. Now I am coming to a very, very important point. You see, memory is the cornerstone of one's progress. What do you mean by cornerstone? When you kind of put up a foundation for a building, you lay the stones in a particular order and you connect the stones and then on the foundation, the building is put on. It's built. So if the foundation remains strong, definitely the durability, the strength of the building will last. It will last long. So the strength of a building depends on the foundation that is laid. Your strength, your intellectual strength, has a lot to do with your memory. That is why psychologists say memory is a cornerstone. 
it is the base and it is the fundamental requirement that helps you go forward in your academic career. So you cannot separate your academic career from memory. Memory and your academic performance are interrelated. They are not two different entities, but they are one. Without memory, there is no learning. So they are interdependent or interconnected. Now, look at these two things. Okay, before that, let me kind of put up this statement for you. Quality of decision. Your memory is responsible for the quality of your decision. So if your memory is good, if it is of a high standard, then you will be able to take quality decisions. So memory and quality decisions are interconnected again. So to come back on what I said, Memory cannot be separated from learning because it is an integral part of learning. And not only that, to make a quality decision, you need memory. You cannot just brush off memory or you cannot put away memory from your academic learning. Right. Learning plus memory. These two things are called as the magical properties of mind. What are the magical properties of mind? Memory and learning. I just told you, they go side by side. They are interconnected and they are said to be magical properties. Not just properties, but magical properties of mind. So, learning helps you to acquire information. Let me put it in a very simple way. You learn many things in the classroom. You learn many facts. You learn many theories, you learn many formulas, you learn many equations, you learn a lot of things in the classroom and what is it called? That is called learning. And learning is the ability to acquire information. This is the first thing that you need to keep in mind. So learning helps you to acquire information but memory helps you to hold the information. Learning helps you to acquire information. Memory helps you to hold what you learn. So if these two things go together, a student can progress in his academic career. Before we get into the techniques of improving the memory, we must learn this. This is very important. Learning and memory are inseparable. They cannot be separated. And learning is the ability to acquire information. And the memory helps you to hold whatever you have learned. It retains whatever you have learned. So memory plays a vital role in the academic progress, in the learning process of a student. Right? Memory is the foundation of learning. We have just spoken about the cornerstone. We have just talked about the foundation for an academic learning. And memory is the foundation of learning. So, if there is no memory, learning does not take place in the way it should be. It does not kind of, uh, it, does, it does not play an active role. If your memory is poor, your level of learning will definitely go down because it affects your learning directly. So, we need to kind of improve our memory and there are lots of techniques. That is what we are going to kind of discuss in the forthcoming classes. So, foundation of learning. If your memory is improved, everything is improved. Memory is a great motivator. It helps you to learn. It helps you to learn. It helps you to learn and learn and learn. So, the more you kind of learn things, the more the memory should be strong. The, the stronger the memory, the faster the learning. Keep this statement in mind. The stronger the memory, the faster the learning. So how do I improve my memory? Now this is the question. Okay. The problem with most of the students, not only most of the students, but even most, with even most of the teachers, it is this. We learn, we forget. We learn, we forget. So it is a kind of cycle, you know. The teacher teaches, 
the student listens, he tries to memorize the facts, he tries to learn what the teacher has taught. Again, after two days, if a teacher asks the same question which he had discussed in the class, he won't be able to answer. Memory is switched off, out of the sea. So what has happened? The brain is not able to retain what has been learnt. The retention capacity of your brain is not up to the level. It is not able to retain. So what do I do to retain my memory? Now there comes the question. We will discuss that. So intelligence. Before we get into improving the memory, let us kind of look at this particular word intelligence. What is intelligence? Intelligence is not scoring 98 out of 100 in maths. Intelligence, you will be surprised and shocked to learn this fact. Intelligence is not scoring 100 out of 100 in maths or 85 out of 100 in English. That's not intelligence. That is storing of information, that is all. But what is intelligence? Intelligence is the ability to recall events, remember events, remember people, remember facts and recalling them. I will break it into a kind of simple way. I will put it in a simple way. Intelligence is the ability to remember events. Remember people, remember facts, and recalling them whenever you like. For example, there might have been several events which uh, would have taken place in your life, in your school life especially. There might have been incidents which are still there in your memory. You might have enjoyed a picnic with your friends. Your teacher must have congratulated you for your very good performance. Or you might have got a present in the assembly with the school children, your colleagues clapping for you. So there might be several events. There are family events. Your family must have celebrated some functions. Relatives might have been invited. Your birthday party. Or there might have been a marriage in your house. Or there might have been a housewarming ceremony. There are so many events which take place in our life. Are you able to recall these events? Whenever you like. Are you able to recall the events whenever you like? Are you able to remember the people whom you have met so far in your life? Are you able to remember the facts that you have learned in your life? How many people do you remember in your life? How many events are you able to remember? How many facts are you able to remember? Well, the more the number of events, the more the number of people, the more the number of facts, the better the memory. So, this is the key word. Recalling. Memory is nothing but the ability to recall whatever you have learned and recalling it whenever you like. If you can remember an incident that happened when you were in the uh, nursery section, some uh, interesting incident, your teacher must have patted you and given you a toffee because you might have given a correct answer. Are you able to recall that event? Well, your memory is working. It's working fine. Are you able to remember the punishment that was given to you when you were in class 3 or 4 or 2 by your teacher? Are you able to bring that back to your mind? Are you able to recall that? Well, if you can do that, the memory is working. But the matter does not stop there. It goes further. Let us see what it is. So, recalling is the function of memory. Keep this in mind. Intelligence is the ability to remember events, people and facts, and the ability to recall all of them, whenever you like. That is intelligence. The next point, the more you remember, the more you can recall. So, you see, remembering the facts, remembering events has a lot to do with recalling. The more you remember, the more you are able to recall. The brain is actually a storehouse, you know. It's very, very important. It is a storehouse. And you kind of feed all the facts 
that you need to remember in the storehouse. So if the brain's memory, the level of your memory is satisfactory, you will be able to recall events, people, facts, whenever you like. Okay? The more you remember, the more you can recall. The next important point, we are almost close towards, I mean, uh, we are nearing the end of the session. Knowledge comes before skill. This is a point to be remembered. Knowledge comes first. Skill comes second. Now, what is knowledge? What is skill? Let me give you an example. Imagine yourself to be a computer engineer or a software engineer. You are a programmer. Let's take it that way. So the job of a programmer is to do the programming. Supposing you're working for a project, you need a programming for that. So before applying your skill, you learn all about the programming. You learn what programming is. You do a study and you get a degree on that. You get a certificate on that. So first, you acquire knowledge about a particular subject. And then you apply that knowledge and when you apply the knowledge, the knowledge is converted into skill. Remember that. When knowledge is applied, it is transformed into skill. So first comes knowledge, then comes skill. How can you apply something which you have not learned? How can you apply your knowledge I mean, how, how can you kind of convert your knowledge into skill if you don't have the knowledge of it? So, the skill is closely related to knowledge. Without knowledge, there is no skill. We have to keep this in mind. So, one information leads to another information. This is a marvelous fact. You learn one information, and from that information, you go on to the next information, then to the next, and to the next, and to the next, and the cycle goes on. So information leads to information, and the conclusion is, the more you know, the more easier it is to know more. I repeat, it might be a confusing statement for students, but I'll make it simple. The more you know, the more easier it is to know more. So I'm trying to acquire information. I'm getting more and more and more information. So the more I know, the more easier it becomes to know more. So if you don't try to know more, you will not be able to acquire more information. Once you get into the activity of knowing more, once you make the effort of knowing more, the journey begins. You keep on learning, keep on learning, keep on learning. You look at all the experts, be it scientists. For example, let's take the life of uh, our late president, Dr. A.P.J. Abdul Kalam. He kept on knowing the facts. He kept on knowing, 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 knowing. And when an interviewer asked him, why have you not married? He said, I'm already married. The interviewer was surprised. Sir, are you joking? I'm not joking. I am married to science. That was his response. I'm married to my subject. So how can a person say that? He kept on knowing more and more and more. So the more you know, the more easy or the easier it becomes to know more. The craving. Once you start learning, the journey continues and you are interested in knowing more and more and more about it. And finally, you take the interest to store all the facts. So, to improve your memory, there are several techniques. We are going to discuss those techniques in the forthcoming classes. But before that, you know this. This is an important kind of statement that you need to keep in mind. The more you know, the easier it becomes to do more, right? Several hours are spent in school. Nobody can deny this fact. We come to school at 8 o'clock in the morning and leave the school by 1.30. We spend nearly 8 hours in school. But not one hour is spent in improving our memory. 
We only take. The teacher gives and gives and gives. You receive and receive and receive. But has the school ever taught you or ever set aside one hour on giving you the techniques to improve your memory? I wonder. Because our syllabus, our system of learning is arranged or set in such a way that there is hardly any time spent on improving the skills of memory. That is the saddest part of it. So what to do? This is something, memory is something which has to be cultivated. It should be a habit. You have your own habits. You have your own, what do you call, uh, things to do. You have your own likes and dislikes, your hobbies. So every person has a set of habits. Memory is also a habit. If you are taking too much sweets, well, that is your habit. If you are spending too much time on playing cricket, well, that is your habit. So whatever the habit is, that is with you. Memory is a habit. And habits can be improved. This is the most important thing. If you have memory, everyone has memory. Now don't tell me, sir, I don't have a memory. Because there are people, we will come to that in the next class. There are people who are with the idea, I have no memory. First, get that statement out of your head. If you feel that you have no memory, I'm sorry to tell you that your concept regarding memory is absolutely wrong. Everyone has memory. Everyone has the potential to uh, practice the memory that he has. So, habits can be improved. Memory is a habit. Definitely can be improved. But how can it be improved? It can be improved with the right training. If the training is given in the right direction, in the right way, memory can definitely be improved. Everyone has the potential to master the memory. This exactly is the crux of our discussion today. What is the meaning of crux? The summary. The summary of our discussion today would be this, and that is everyone has the potential to master the memory. There isn't a single human being in this world who is not blessed with memory. Everyone is blessed with memory. Who is, there is not a single human being in this world who, uh, who doesn't have memory. Everyone has memory and everyone has the potential to master the memory. So you must keep this in mind. Only when you have this mindset, you can go further into improving your memory. The techniques can be understood. So first accept that you have the potential to master your memory. When you keep on doing what you have done again and again, you keep on getting what you got before. You go on doing the same thing again and again and again. The result would be the same again and again and again. So what is the use of doing something again and again and again to get something back as a result? To get something, uh, to get the same thing as a result. Do something different. If you want to get something different, then you must do something different. Otherwise, you cannot expect a different result. So, instead of keep on, keeping on doing the same thing again and again and getting the same result again and again, we should try to do something different. And only when we do something different, we will be able to get something different. So, what are those different things that we are going to do? What are the techniques that we are going to apply to improve our memory? What are the methods? It is a vast subject, but we will break them into simple lessons and we shall discuss those techniques in the forthcoming classes. Till then, you just keep these points in your mind. And this is a very serious topic because it deals with your academic progress. It deals with your academic excellence. Therefore, try to understand that you have the potential to improve your memory. Everyone is blessed with memory and memory is a habit. It can be improved. If you can keep these, mind, these points in your mind, I think we are on the right track. And keep pondering over these points till we meet again. Safe, stay at home and have a good time.